Negative core beliefs instilled through religious programming are among the most damaging forces in our lives today. These beliefs twist ancient wisdom, trapping you in a cycle of guilt, shame, and fear. They rob you of your confidence, making you second-guess your worth, your choices, and even your relationships. Imagine feeling powerless, constantly seeking approval, afraid of making a mistake, and believing you're not enough. Even if you left religion behind, these beliefs can still haunt you, quietly controlling your thoughts and actions. But here's the truth. You are not broken. Today we're uncovering the ancient meaning of the Christ, the key to unlocking your true power. If you're ready to break free from these psychological chains formed from religious dogma, stay with me. What we're about to explore will change the way you see yourself forever. By the end of this video, you'll uncover how deeply negative core beliefs from religious conditioning still shape your life, whether you've left your faith behind or still hold on to pieces of it. More importantly, you'll discover how to break free from these limiting beliefs and reclaim your divine essence, known in ancient Egypt as the Christ. Together, we'll unlock the powerful wisdom of ancient Kemet, revealing a forgotten path to spiritual awakening and personal freedom. If you're ready to let go of guilt, fear, and doubt, and step fully into your true potential, this journey will change your life. Section 1. The Christ. The Original Divine Awakening. In the ancient Egyptian spiritual tradition, the Christ symbolized something far more profound than most of us realize today. It represented the soul's journey from ignorance of its true self to awakening to its God self. The Egyptians believed that our true essence, the soul, or what they called the Ka, was on a sacred path of awakening. One of the most important figures in this journey was Osiris, or as the ancient Commissions called him, Asar, aka Biblical Lazarus. Osiris wasn't just a mythical god ruling over the underworld. He was a representation of the soul, the divine essence that enters the physical body to live on earth. The underworld in this context wasn't some distant realm after death. It was life itself, here on earth. Osiris symbolized the soul ensconced in matter, navigating the physical world, sometimes unaware of the divine spark it carries within. Esoterically, the ancients called it being asleep, which is the opposite of being woke. Originally, in ancient Egypt, the Christ wasn't a savior figure external to you. It was the process of awakening your own God self and divine nature. It was a state of consciousness where you realize that you're not a flawed, damaged being. Instead, you're a divine soul on a journey growing, learning, and reconnecting with your highest potential through each lifetime. But then something changed. As religious doctrines evolved and Christianity rose to prominence, the ancient wisdom of the Christ was replaced with damaging core beliefs that came from negative religious programming. These beliefs told us that instead of being born divine, we were inherently flawed, sinful, and in need of salvation. The idea of being broken created deep psychological wounds. You were taught that you were somehow different from what made you and in a constant need of external validation or salvation which can keep you in a cycle of feeling powerless and inadequate. Understanding core beliefs and their power over your life. Core beliefs are the most deeply held ideas we have about ourselves, others, and the world. These beliefs can act like an invisible lens, coloring every experience, emotion, and decision we make. Most of us go through life never realizing that these beliefs aren't facts, they're perceptions. Yet, because they're so ingrained, we don't see them as beliefs. Instead, we see them as simply the way the world is. When you start to question your core beliefs, it can be unsettling because it feels like you're questioning reality itself. And yet, this process is crucial for breaking free from limiting patterns and stepping into your full potential. Let's take the belief in original sin as an example. Whether you've consciously deconstructed your faith or not, this belief, rooted in religious doctrine, may still unconsciously shape how you see yourself in the world. This belief tells us that we are flawed at our core, 
and in need of external salvation, which creates a fundamental sense of inadequacy. But what if that belief was never true? What if, instead of being inherently broken, you're a divine being on a sacred journey of growth? In the ancient Egyptian tradition, this understanding was captured in the concept of the Christ. The realization that the divine exists within you, not separate from you. Section 2. The Christ versus Negative Core Beliefs. Two Opposing Messages. Let's compare these two ideas. In the ancient Egyptian understanding, Christ was the realization that you are a divine being and the power to create your life resides within you. You're not separate from the divine. You are divine, capable of growth and transformation across lifetimes. Osiris symbolized that spark within the physical, awakening to its true nature. His hands were shown to be free in depictions, symbolizing the soul's ability to create and shape life. This profound symbolism points to the idea that you create your reality. The journey wasn't about being saved from sin. It was about remembering who you truly are, a soul on the path to enlightenment. This remembering of yourself as a divine being was their idea of salvation. It's about realizing you are enough just as you are. However, religious doctrines twisted this concept. They turned the process of self-realization into external salvation, focusing on guilt, unworthiness, and seeking approval from an external figure. This shift distorted the true idea of Christ. Replacing internal empowerment with a disempowering core belief system that told you you are not enough. These beliefs can trap you in an energetic cycle of guilt and fear. But what if I told you that simply by living and being present in this life, you've already achieved what ancient teachings viewed as salvation? Again, you're not broken. You are whole and powerful. Understanding this contrast between the ancient concept of Christ and the disempowering core beliefs shaped by later religious doctrines lead us to an even more critical question. How do these negative beliefs impact us today? While the Christ is a teaching about self-realization and personal divinity, negative core beliefs have a profound influence on modern psychology and behavior. These beliefs, ingrained deeply through fear-based religious programming, extend far beyond religious concepts. They shape how we navigate our everyday lives, our relationships, and even our sense of self. Let's now explore how these harmful beliefs manifest in the psyche and examine their far-reaching effects on mental health, personal agency, and emotional well-being. Section 3. The Psychological Impact of Negative Core Beliefs in Everyday Life Number 1. Fear-Based Control Christianity uses fear of hell, punishment, or divine disapproval to control behavior. This leads to core beliefs like, the world is a dangerous place, there is evil everywhere, or I must be perfect to avoid punishment. These beliefs often create a psychological rigidity that shows up in chronic anxiety or depression as people struggle with the impossible standards set before them. For example, imagine you're constantly checking your actions for moral correctness. You might overanalyze every decision at work, worrying endlessly about making mistakes that would disappoint your boss or coworkers. This overthinking isn't just about wanting to perform well. It's rooted in a fear of being judged or punished, much like the fear of eternal judgment that was ingrained in you. This fear can also manifest in your relationships, where you might constantly second-guess yourself, afraid that any wrong word or action might lead to rejection or abandonment. Number two, loss of self-agency. One of the most damaging aspects of negative religious programming is the loss of self-agency. You may have been taught that your fate is in the hands of a higher power, leaving you feeling powerless in your own life. This creates core beliefs such as God is in control or I'm nothing without God. This often leads to helplessness, stagnation, and even despair. For example, consider how this might play out when you're faced with making a big life decision, like switching careers or moving to a new city. 
Instead of trusting your instincts or desires, you may find yourself waiting for some kind of external sign to make the decision for you. This can leave you feeling stuck, as though you're at the mercy of circumstances or people's opinions. Rather than having the confidence to make decisions that reflect your own true desires, you might also find yourself unable to advocate for your needs in personal relationships waiting for your partner or friends to validate your feelings rather than asserting your own agency. Number three, splitting of the psyche. Carl Jung observed that individuals who internalize conflicting religious dogmas often experience a splitting of the psyche. This happens when core beliefs rooted in fear and judgment conflict with your natural desires, leading to inner turmoil and feelings of hypocrisy. Over time, this creates an internal conflict that can manifest as anxiety, obsessive compulsive behaviors, or a chronic sense of not knowing who you really are. For example, picture this. You might explore new creative outlets like dancing or art, but something inside you keeps telling you that pursuing such desires is selfish or sinful. This creates an internal war between your authentic self, the part of you that wants to explore life freely and the part that clings to the fear-based beliefs from religious programming. As a result, you might constantly feel guilty or conflicted, unable to enjoy new experiences without a nagging sense of doing something wrong. Over time, this kind of split can leave you feeling disconnected from yourself, creating a deep sense of dissatisfaction. Number four, rigid cognitive structures. Religious doctrine often builds rigid and flexible core beliefs. These beliefs, such as there is only one truth or I must follow strict rules to be worthy, are resistant to change because they're reinforced by communal or cultural narratives. This rigidity can block psychological and spiritual growth, keeping you from exploring other paths to self-realization. For example, you might find yourself rigidly adhering to certain behaviors to gain approval, even when they no longer serve you or your loved ones. For instance, you may feel compelled to volunteer for church duties or other community obligations, sacrificing your own needs or the needs of your family because you've been taught that earning approval and avoiding judgment from others is more important. Even when the demands of these obligations conflict with your own personal well-being or relationships, you may still feel trapped by the belief that you must continue or risk being seen as unworthy or unfaithful. This resistance to change keeps you stuck in a cycle of people-pleasing, closing you off to personal and spiritual growth. Section 4. Three Steps to Reclaiming Your Inner Christ. The Path to Healing. But here's the good news. You can reclaim your inner Christ, your divine essence, and start the process of healing. The first step is to recognize that these negative core beliefs are distortions of ancient wisdom. You're not inherently broken. You're an evolving soul here to awaken and grow. Here are three steps you can begin with. Number one, shift your core beliefs. Begin questioning what you believe and why you believe and where your feelings of unworthiness come from. Embrace the idea that your soul is enough and is on a journey toward self-realization. Number two, restore personal empowerment. Instead of waiting for external validation, turn inward. Through meditation and self-reflection, awaken your inner Christ and reclaim your inner power. Number three, overcome fear with love. The journey to divine awakening is about love and compassion for yourself and others. By choosing love over fear, you release the anxiety that has been holding you back and step into a life filled with purpose and joy. Now that you understand the original meaning of the Christ, beyond dogma and the limiting core beliefs, let's be real. These negative core beliefs are truly the antichrist. They've kept so many of us trapped in fear and guilt but it's time to break free. You are not a sinner. You're a divine soul and expression of the Christ on a journey to realize your full potential. Your journey isn't about escaping judgment. It's about awakening to your true essence. The Christ lives within you, waiting to be rediscovered. This is your moment to embrace your power, heal from the past, 
and step fully into the life you were meant to live. Stepping into a life of joy and purpose is a profound process of inner transformation. If this resonates with you and you feel ready to deepen your understanding of these ancient teachings, I invite you to explore the courses available at www.cometiccenteredliving.com. They're designed to help you rediscover this wisdom and apply it to your spiritual and personal evolution. Whether you're just starting out or looking to expand your consciousness, these teachings will guide you toward awakening your true self. Thank you for watching. If this video resonates with you, consider subscribing to join our growing community on this journey of rediscovery and enlightenment. Your support helps us reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers. But more importantly, by sharing this video, you can spread these empowering insights to others who need them. Together, let's bring the ancient wisdom to light and inspire a positive shift in the world.